The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that people run to him and they are saved. You ever have one of those weeks where you just couldn't wait to get to church? That when you woke up on Sunday morning, you were, you were running there because you needed some fresh mercy. You needed to be in the presence of God. I, I feel like that today. I could not wait to be here at North Rock Church. In fact, I cannot believe it. I feel kind of like a mosquito at a nudist colony. I'm just so excited that I don't even know where to begin. Because this is an amazing church from the moment you pull into the parking lot all the way into the service and you think about the leadership and what God is doing here and the growth. This is an amazing place. I mean, how many of you know that if you call this church home that there is no better church in all of San Antonio? that the grass is not greener anywhere else, that this is where it's at. That's why I want to honor today my friends, pastors Jonathan and Alicia. We love them so much. They serve as overseers in our house. And it's such a blessing because they make sure that excellence is coming out in the details. I mean, everything about this church, it's just amazing. I watched today during the worship segment the excellence even in the words of the songs. Do you know everything is spelled exactly as it's supposed to be spelled? <laughs> That's a big deal. We're trying to pull that off at my church in Seattle, but we don't always get it right. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, for a long time, we were singing, Honey Spirit, you are welcome here. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's Holy Spirit. They get that right at North Rock. <laughs> but really, I am very, very excited to be here today. My name is Jason Bentley, and uh, no, I do not drive a Bentley, but one day, one day, should the Lord bless me in that regard, I will drive it to the glory of God. Hashtag preachers of Seattle. <laughs> and I pastor as... Jonathan mentioned a moment ago, I pastor High Point Church, which is a church that I planted a few years ago. And I just want to put you at ease here today before we go any further. I want to comfort you with the knowledge that we named our church before the state of Washington voted to legalize marijuana, that there is no connection there. High Point Church, we're actually talking about Jesus being the high point of your life. So just, just so you'll know, and um, I'm just very glad that you're here. It's, it's a privilege to be able to, to close out this series. I think this, this idea of mood swingers is, is really important considering the state of affairs in our world and the things that, that are happening. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of, of worry. But I've come today to close out the series and to let you know that God has a plan for all of that. He's got a plan to flood your life with peace. How many of you would say that you could use a little more peace in your life? So grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles with me. We're going to take our text today straight out of Philippians. Straight out of Philippians chapter number four. Philippians chapter four and verse number seven. The Apostle Paul says, if you do these things, will you say that with me, these things, if you do these things, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts quiet and your heart at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then, then the God of peace will be with you. If you do these things, you're going to experience peace that your mind can't even understand just how amazing it is. And then, as if that's not enough, then the God of peace 
is going to be with you. And to close out Mood Swingers, I want to share with you a little something that I'm calling Summertime Playlist. Summertime Playlist. I love technology. In fact, I am, I am blessed to, to live and to work in a very technologically advanced city. Seattle's a cool place. I'm not from there originally. I am originally from Ohio, the home of the national champion Ohio State Buckeyes. And then I moved to Seattle to plant our church, and, and I love it because we have Microsoft there, Amazon is there, so many, so many different things, and I can enjoy technology. Just last night, I left my family just for a, a few hours, and my two little boys, my seven-year-old and my three-year-old, they were already missing me. So when I arrived before they went to bed, I, I got to interact with them via FaceTime. And that is just the coolest thing, to be able to be this far away and to be able to, to see my boys and to have my three-year-old trying to kiss me through the phone and getting frustrated that, that I'm not able really to kiss him back, to be able to, to pray over them before they go to bed. I, I just love technology. And one thing I love about how technology has developed is the easy way that you can now compile your favorite music. It's not always been that way. I love music, and I love to put together my my favorite songs, but it's not always been easy. I mean, there was a day and a time when you had to go out and to buy a blank audio cassette. Now, if you're sitting beside someone that's 25 or under, take a moment and explain to them what that is. But we would get a blank audio cassette, and, and I would bring it home, and I would find, I would find the boom box with the side-by-side -side tape deck. And I'd put that blank tape in the boom box, and then I'd turn on my favorite radio station, and I would listen from my favorite songs. And as soon as it would come on, I would hit that play and record button at the exact same time so I could capture it. And God forbid you would be doing something like washing the dishes or mowing the grass, because when that song came on, you had to stop what you were doing, drop the dishes, run from the lawnmower, and get in there. You've got to get the song or else you'd be waiting all day long just to, to capture it again. And, and I would spend hours, even days, putting together the perfect mixtape. And the reason that, that I was so committed to mixtapes was because it, it helped me so much when it came to interacting with the opposite sex. You see, when you're not very attractive or talented like I am, you've got to use a mixtape to get a girl to go out on a date with you. And so I would make mixtapes not for girlfriends, not for serious relationships. I would make mixtapes just to get a girl to agree to go out for a hamburger with me. Because I figured there is no way humanly possible that a girl can resist a mixtape that has All My Life by Casey and JoJo and Always Be My Baby by Mariah Carey. I mean, you give them a mixtape like that and it's on. We are going to Wendy's, baby. I mean, I look back now, and, and surely, surely every girl that I ever interacted with had to think I was like the biggest creeper of all time. Hey, my name is Jason. Here's a mixtape, a little something I made for you. <laughs> it got easier, thank God. CDs came along, and you could actually get a CD and, and, and rip some of your favorite songs off of the CD and, and, and compile them together and then, and then burn your favorites onto a CD, but, but now, now, man, this millennial generation, they just don't realize how good they've got it. They can just download whatever music they like. 
download their favorite songs, and then start sorting them according to playlists. And now we've got a playlist for everything. We, we've got a playlist for, for when we work out. We've got a playlist for when we clean the house. We've got a playlist when we want to be romantic with our spouse. Hello, somebody. We've got a playlist for when we're just wanting to chill. And, and we've got a playlist which, for me, is probably my, my favorite, and that is the summertime playlist. The summertime playlist. It's, it's fantastic because there's nothing like... A summertime playlist. You know what it is that I'm talking about. It's, it's songs that we associate with summer. Songs that we link to good times, beaches, barbecues, kicking back, taking it easy, low stress. And we make summertime playlists because we instinctively know that there is a connection between stress and happiness. There's a direct connection between our mood and our playlist. When stress goes up, happiness goes down. But when stress goes down, happiness goes up. So what do we do? We go and we crank that summertime playlist. I mean, we could be buried, buried in paperwork on the job and Happy by Pharrell comes on. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. That comes on, and immediately you're feeling good inside. You could be at the, the doctor's office. You could be getting your, your oil changed. And Summertime by the Fresh Prince comes on. And you're like, oh, yeah. That's my jam. You know, one of my favorites is When the Sun Goes Down by Kenny Chesney. I love that song. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. When that comes on, I am in my mind transported to a tropical, magical place where my feet are, 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 are in the crashing waves and, and I'm just having an amazing time. But for you, maybe it's California Girls by the Beach Boys. Maybe it's, it's 5 o'clock somewhere by that amazing duo of Alan Jackson and Jimmy Buffett. I think all of us, at some point in time, has had Bobby McFerrin's song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, on our playlist. So for those of you that are, are loving a stress-free existence or would love just a few moments reprieve from the stress in your life, wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be great to have a summertime playlist year-round? Most of America would. Do you know that personal stress is at the highest rate it's been in America since World War II, and it has surpassed car accidents as the leading cause of death? Stress, worry, fear, anxiety. We've got to have something. But the good news is that our good God has a plan to shift our mood, to turn us around, to make us feel better, to get through life. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares about us. He has a, a summertime playlist for our life to reduce our stress and to flood us with peace. And the Apostle Paul lists it out here in this passage in Philippians. He says, if you do these things. In other words, guys, listen. You can try doing it your way. You, you can try to swing your mood in, in, in the fashion that you're most familiar with, but, but I can't promise you that's going to work very well. But if you do these things, what I'm about to share with you, if you'll build this into the playlist of your life, then you'll have more peace than your mind can even understand. And the God of peace is going 
to flood your life if you do these things. So what are these things? Well, he outlines them for us in Philippians 4 and verse number 6. And this is where it starts. He says, don't worry about anything. So if you're serious about swinging your mood and reducing stress, fear, and worry in your life, you need to, to number one, the first thing on that playlist is refuse to worry. Refuse to worry. And I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me right now like, how is this possible? I've learned a great lesson this summer when, when dealing with my, my oldest son. He's, his name's Dylan. He's seven. And this has been a landmark summer for him because it's this summer that he is finally tall enough to ride all of the roller coasters at the amusement parks. He's getting ready to go into second grade, and he has been so frustrated for years that he's not able to get on those fearsome, death-defying rides. At age four, I'm trying to explain to him, now, Dylan, now, if they put you on this ride, you're going to fly out. <laughs> and he's like, awesome, let's do this. And he's heartbreaking, heartbroken when I tell him that, that that's not going to be a possibility. But this summer, it's time. He's tall enough. And so we, a couple of months ago, went to a, an amusement park near our house. And, and we go in, and he's grabbing my hand, and he's pulling me towards the biggest, baddest ride in the park. And he's like, come on, Dad, let's go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And as we're, we're going along, I, I look over at him, and there's not a, a trace of nervousness, not a trace of anxiety. And... And I asked him, Dylan, are, are you at all nervous as we're on the way, as we're waiting in line? You're not at all nervous about this. I mean, take a look at that. Listen to the screams of the people. This doesn't, this doesn't unsettle you at all. No, no, absolutely not. And then a few moments later, I noticed that he is very intently studying my every move. He is looking at my face he is reading my body language. He is, he is watching me. And I realize that he's not worried because he's watching me. And he's watching me because he trusts me. And in that moment, it dawned on me that when you and I are facing the challenges, the complexities, the adversities, and the difficulties that life brings our way, the way that we can refuse to worry is to simply trust God more. Our focus should really not to be to refuse to worry. It really should be to trust God more because when your trust goes up, your worry comes down. So when we are put in a position where it's outside of our comfort zone and we feel like the walls are closing in on us and that we're going to have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, can I encourage you to just grab hold of your heavenly Father's hand and squeeze that real tight and get your eyes on him. That's why one writer in the Bible said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. I've got my eyes on him because all Although this may seem fearsome and daunting and overwhelming, he is not at all ruffled. God is not at all taken by surprise. He knows the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. And God has got my back. He is with me and I can trust him. If I can just learn to trust him more, I will worry less about the things that tend to make me worried in life. And that's why I now have a better understanding of what Jesus says in Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and verse number 25. Jesus says, this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all of your worries, 
Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? No, they they detract from your life. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. And if God cares so wonderfully for birds and wildflowers that are here today, gone tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about all of these things saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Who am I going to marry? Who's going to hire me? What should I major in in college? How am I going to pay these bills? He said these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father, He already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything that you need. North Rock, I am here to challenge you to reach out and to grab the hand of your heavenly father. Grab hold of Jesus. Grab hold of the one who is never shaken, who is never fearful. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? He's with me. And, I, and I've learned that trust, trust is really the only antidote to worry, stress, and fear. That's how you overcome those things. You trust. You just let go, surrender, squeeze his hand, and trust. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to unfold. I don't know what is in my tomorrow, but I know who is in my tomorrow. So should I live or should I die, I will be with him. He is in my tomorrow. I trust him, and he's going to make it all work out. The playlist of your life has got to be to refuse to worry by trusting in him more. The second thing the Apostle Paul illuminates to us in verse number six. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and tell God what you need. The second thing you need to add to the summertime playlist of your life is just that. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. And I know that that feels somewhat daunting and that, that feels some, somewhat foreign, particularly if we view prayer as some kind of obligatory, religious, ritualistic type of thing. But I want to I help shift your paradigm today. I want you to think about what you do when you worry. When you worry, when you are up all night, can't sleep, filled with anxiety, pacing the floor, wringing your hands. You are undoubtedly talking to yourself in in a very negative way. Worry is negative self-talk. You're you're focusing on the negative what-ifs. You're extrapolating situations and you're worried about the unknown and you're saying things like if this happens that's not going to be good and this has got to happen or that's going to go bad and we are talking to ourselves in a very negative way so the apostle paul comes along and says you know what if you want your stress to come down and your happiness to go up stop talking to yourself in a negative way, don't be consumed with negative self-talk. Direct your conversation, direct your communication to God. And start talking to Him about what it is that you're feeling and what it is that you're facing and what it is that you're going through. Just start talking to Him. Why spend all this time, be up all night, day after day, talking negatively to yourself when you know the situation is out of your control and you can't do anything about it? 
It's a total waste of time. Instead, start talking to God and let God begin to work on your behalf because unlike you, God can do something about it. He's got the ability and he's got the desire and he's given us this eternal invitation. Come, come, cast your cares on me. I care about you. After all, it cannot be both your problem and God's problem. So pray about everything. That's why Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 7, unload all of your worries on God since he is looking after you. James in the fourth chapter says, you do not have because you do not ask God. The final thing that you need to add to the playlist of your life if you're serious about a perpetual mood swing to just change the playing field of the emotions of your life. Philippians 4 and verse number 6, Paul says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And then notice and thank Him for all that He has done. This is the third and final thing. Thank God in all things. Thank God in all things. There is a huge difference between thanking God for all things and thanking God in all things. And do you know that the Bible does not call us And I'm thankful for this, to thank God for all things. Because quite frankly, there is a lot that happens in my life, and I would imagine happens in your life, that I am not thankful for. I am not thankful that my 51-year-old father, who was my pastor and my best friend, I am not thankful that he passed away unexpectedly. And that he never got a chance to meet my wife, never got a chance to hold his grandsons. I am not thankful that I had to preach his funeral and bury him on my 26th birthday. I am not thankful for that passive aggressive boss that is holding me back from a promotion that I deserve. I am not thankful for the continual baby mama drama that I've got to deal with in my blended family situation. I am not thankful that so many times at the end of the month I don't have what it takes to pay all of my bills. There's so much that I am not thankful for. But the Bible doesn't say to thank God for all things. It says to thank God in all things. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18, it says, In everything, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you in everything you can find something to be thankful for in every situation in every circumstance in every adversity you can find something to be thankful for no matter how bad things are I can always find something to be thankful for and to fix my heart on last January when Russell Wilson blew the Super Bowl for us and and threw the ball when it clearly should have been ran in by beast mode I can still in that moment as heart-wrenching as it is I can find things to be thankful for and I can be thankful in that moment. I'm thankful that Russ Wilson is a Christian because angels are going to need to protect him from the Seattle fans that are angry about what just happened. But no matter what we're facing, my friends, we can find something to be thankful for and we can actually be thankful in the midst of the fire. We can be thankful in the midst of of the flood we can be thankful in the divorce in the foreclosure in the bankruptcy we're not thankful for those things we can be thankful in those things and that's why i've discovered that grateful people 
are happy people because of what they choose to focus on. Happy people, as we sometimes tend to think, are, are not people that are, are, are free from problems. That's completely unrealistic. Not even a possibility. If you're waiting on the perfect environment for your life, a life devoid of stressors and, and issues, you're going to be waiting a long time. So we don't wait. We don't wait for that. No, we just start learning how to be more grateful and more thankful. Grateful people are happy people because what they're focusing on in the trial, in the test, in the storm, they're thanking God for another day of mercy, thanking God for another day of grace, thanking God for favor, thanking God for open doors, thanking God for his presence, thanking God for forgiveness, thanking God for an opportunity to live a life of fulfillment, not just an ordinary, average, everyday life, but an abundant life. We thank him in all things. And here's the conclusion of the matter as we think about our summertime playlist, as we think about adopting, refusing to worry, praying about everything, and giving thanks to God in all things. I want to bring this home to the final conclusion of the matter. Those of you that are looking for a permanent mood swing, those of you that are looking for happiness, it's always eluding your grasp. Looking for peace, but you can't seem to make it a reality. Job 22 and verse 21 hits the nail on the head. And this is what he says. Obey God and be at peace with him. This is the way to happiness. Obey God and be at peace with him. This is the way to happiness. If you're unfamiliar to faith or Jesus, it's a little strange. Certainly all of us recognize that it's countercultural. But the Apostle Paul said, if, if you do these things, then the God of peace is going to come and he's going to stay and you're going to have peace like you never dreamed possible. So I want to pray for you here today. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I want to pray for you here today that that God will help you, that he'll help you build this playlist in your life. For some of you, it may be a bit of a challenge. It'll be like making a mixtape of old. Others of you, it may be just like dragging and making a playlist on iTunes. But whatever the case may be, I want to pray that, that you begin to refuse to worry Pray about everything and thank God in all things. In fact, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I wonder if there's anyone here today that would slip up their hand and would say, Pastor Jason, I, 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 do, I need some help in this area. I, I would like a little more peace in my life. I, I, I do need some stress to go down. I would like to experience a little more happiness. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right where you are? I want to know who it is I'm praying for. Thank you. Hands going up all over. I would imagine that really applies just to all of us. We could all do better. So let me pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your peace and your presence that is here in this place right now. You're here to do a work in our life. And God, we throw open the door of our heart and our mind to receive, to receive you and to receive your peace. God, help us. Help us in the days ahead to do exactly what it is that you have shown us to do here and now. I pray that you would, you would guard our hearts from falling back to old methods and old strategies of dealing with worry and stress. And 
trying to handle it ourselves and help us to embrace what you've made available. Jesus, we love you and we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. As heads remain bowed and eyes remain closed, there's one last person that I want to reach for here today and and that's the person that maybe is recognizing that you're you're not really where you need to be with God. And today is the perfect day, the perfect opportunity for you to begin to do what Job encourages us all to do. And that's to obey God and to be at peace with him. This is the only way to happiness. And whether you're just now coming to faith, you're just now attending a church, just now hearing about Jesus, or maybe at one time you lived for him, but you allowed some things to separate you from him. You're you're realizing today's my day for a new beginning. Today's my day for a fresh start. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to begin to obey him. I don't know everything there is to know about him, but I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust that he's going to help me. I'm going to take a step of faith right now. I'm going to let go. I'm going to surrender, and I'm going to grab his hand. If that's you, no one's looking around, would you just raise your hand? I would love to see who you are today. Thank you. I see some hands. Thank you. Thank you. There's others of you right now. Just respond to God's grace. Respond to this second chance. He's saying, I love you. I gave my life for you. I am here for you. Let me lead you. Let me be with you on the roller coaster of life. You have nothing to fear. I'm going to be your God. Everyone, will you join me in praying this final prayer together all over the house? Pray it with me. I I don't want anyone that raised their hand to feel alone here. So let's pray together as a church family. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the one true God. And in this moment, I surrender to you. I give you my life. Live in me. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to make me a new person. I turn from my ways And I embrace your ways. Help me to follow you. Teach me your words and show me your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, North Rock. Let's give it up for everyone that made that decision here today. Come on.